Hello everyone and welcome back to another album review and in this video I'm going to review Visions of Bodies Being Burned by Clipping. This is the second horror themed album Clipping drop in Halloween and this is a sequel or like a second half to the previous album they did one year before called There Existed An Addiction to Blood. An album that really managed to push the boundaries as one of the most unique hip hop albums to be ever made with its whole horror theme, its whole concept. Some of the instrumentals we'd see David Rapp would just be some bizarre are pieces of recordings and his flow would always work and be impeccable. This album also in some occasions had some mind-blowing set of features and the overall style and concept of this album with its horror themes just works amazingly musically and conceptually and David is an amazing lyricist the whole way he just portrays all of those stories being put together it makes for some shockingly descriptive results, also tying them amazingly with some current socio-political struggles, this album is just a genius piece of work that in so many occasions could be considered a piece of art in both its music and its lyrics. However, for me, the self-titled clipping album would still be my personal favorite work from them. And this is because the one thing that would make there existed an addiction to blood somewhat inferior to this album is some of the interludes in this thing as for the most part I would feel that the interludes was the main unnecessary thing about this album. They would mostly feel like filler. I get that they tried to just enhance the whole horror experience with some of the references over here but I still felt that there were too much and not that much needed. And here's the thing I got There Existed an Addiction to Blood on vinyl and for some weird reason, I don't know why they decided to do this, but they actually just decided to not include the interludes over here and just taking the main tracks out of this album, There Existed an Addiction to Blood actually becomes a 9 and my favorite clipping album. So yeah, for the most part, the interludes actually felt like filler, they were not that necessary in order to make this album a captivating experience. So getting into visions of bodies being burned, I would start with a main negative on this album and once again it's the interludes. I still thought that it was not necessary for all of those interludes to be in this album. It doesn't really add that much to the experience. However, I would say that compared to There Existed an Addiction to Blood, I actually thought that those interludes were slightly better and more well put together. For example, the track intro, even if it has a really slow introduction to it, I think that when it comes to the second half, we get one of the most insane deliveries from David in like this entire album. Like I really cannot catch his flow in this track that constantly changes and it's just mind-blowing the way he just manages to wrap it to like almost nothing. It's almost a cappella in some occasions. It's insane. Also, the track Witchboard transitions amazingly into the next track 96 Nev Campbell, which it was a teaser track, so I know how it started. But now getting it into context, the way it transitions from Witchboard to 96 Nev Campbell, it still managed to catch me off guard even though I was aware of the track before. Also, the interlude drove is extremely unsettling. It's this field recording piece of like crickets and sheep in the background. And yeah, it's a bizarre but quite interesting interlude. The one I didn't care for whatsoever was the track Invocation with Greg Stewart, which I don't really see the feature over here, how it complements and enhances the whole experience because it's mostly like a sine wave frequency and I don't see it transitioning nicely at all with a track pain every day that comes next. And so yeah, it was the one main interlude track that I didn't care for 
whatsoever. So now that we've got the interludes out of the way, we have the first teaser track Say The Name, which in my opinion, it's a really impressive track. I really like the beat, the overall background ambience to this thing, the speech down sampling is really well done. However, I would say that this track tracks a bit longer than I would want to. It's like 5 minutes and for the most part, it's a pretty repetitive song. It doesn't really progress that much with the exception of like the final minute which is a really amazing explosive part with those additional percussion and those additional scenes and it makes for a very strong finisher. However, I would say that I sort of prefer the edited version that's on YouTube. It feels slightly more well put together compared to the original one. However, I still find it to be one of the greatest songs over here. I really like the whole melody to this and it has managed to grow on me. It's a really powerful track. 96 Nev Campbell is one of the tracks with my favorite features over here. Kam and China absolutely kill this track with her very haunting and really ranchy deliveries. I really love the way they rap over this really disturbing track with all of those different like horror themed samples. This cricket sample in the background just feels so unsettling. The overall track has some really nice beat transitions to it. There's this amazing door slam sample followed by this guy and yeah it's another really well crafted song then is where like with her existed an addiction to blood we get into some of those moments that feel quite experimental quite out there but didn't necessarily give me that much of an impression as great tracks that i would see myself coming back to in certain occasions this album does remind me a lot of like some of the stuff from their existed and addiction to blood even if visions of bodies being buried is like its own beast but apart from that we have the track something underneath which is a kind of short track, goes for around two and a half minutes. And I wouldn't say that instrumentally this track amazes me that much. I really like though this glitch passage that goes from one ear to the next. It makes for a really unsettling experience. The one thing that it's such a big highlight on this album is David's flow in this thing, which is insane. In my opinion, this is one of the craziest deliveries we've heard from David in any song. Like his rap on this track is absolutely insane and there is like no beat to this thing. Now Make Them Dead feels like this album's version of the track Shut It Down from the previous one which Shut It Down was actually one of my least favorite tracks from the previous album and Make Them Dead is one of my least favorites in this album. Even though I really like the extremely harsh and noisy segment in this track it just becomes repetitive quite fast and I didn't care for it all that much going forward. It also offers some of the most simplistic deliveries from David, the overall pacing of this track. It feels really one-dimensional, it's extremely minimalistic and I admire that with a the hook they were going for something different with those ethereal and unsettling voice passages that repeat dead but I wouldn't necessarily say that they work entirely that well in my opinion. Sibad is one of those tracks where we see David just rapping over some field recording samples for the most part. It's another one of those tracks that gives you a feel that you're into a horror movie. It's really immersive and I really love some of the recordings over here like this door screech and also those bell chimes that come towards the chorus. It's a really interesting track. Then we have Pain Every Day with Michael Esposito which in my opinion it's one of the greatest tracks, if not the greatest, in this album. This is definitely one of my all-time favorite clipping tracks. It's really amazing what they did with this one in particular. I really love the structure on this track. It goes like 7 to 8 and it actually feels so well put together. David's flow in this track is absolutely superb. Lyrically, conceptually, this track is insane. And the overall experience, it's like such a a sad and harrowing track for the most part. Love the industrial slam samples, love this glitchy, plucky synth passage, and I also love the breakcore elements. 
didn't really expect to really see a break core moment in a clipping album but in this track it definitely works amazing love some of the drum choices they used in this track also the end of this track with those break core parts combined with those string sections it is so beautiful what a gorgeous way to end a track check the lock is one of the catchiest tracks over here it has a groove to it even if you still have some quite unsettling elements of production on this thing but the bass line in this hook is like so groovy and so good it's quite an interesting track then after this point we get into looking like meat featuring horror and this track is extremely aggressive. I would say that this is actually the most aggressive thing we've heard from clipping. The bass and the instrumental on this thing has such an intense industrial feel to it. Now the thing is that I would say that when it comes to the hook, it's possibly the weakest hook out of this entire album in my opinion. It doesn't really develop that much compared to the rest of the track. But still the verses on this thing are sickening. The instrumental is amazing and I also love horrors feature in this track it works amazingly over here now eaten alive with Jeff Parker and Ted Barnes I really do not know what to say about this track this is absolute chaos this is such a chaotic track I would never expect how much further Clipping would go into experimenting with their sounds and their approaches on rap music, but they still never fail to amaze me as this track is definitely one of the weirdest ones they've done. It's like a really chaotic industrial piece like smashing and moving stuff into like a ball or something and when you get towards the last minutes it becomes really intense you don't have more vocals to it and it's just combined with those weird free improvised guitar passages it is such a bizarre track, but in my opinion it works amazingly. I'm really amazed by this track and I really admire David once again rapping in such an unorthodox piece of recordings. Buddy for the Pile featuring Sickness is a track that I'm so so glad it's contained in this album. This is actually not a new track. This is one that they made like four years ago or so. It was contained as the first track in an Adult Swim compilation called Noise and it was an album that would feature so many other artists and it would also have this track. And when I first heard of this track, I was really amazed by the super superb noise production on this thing and some great deliveries and flows and overall progression on this track. So I was super excited to listen to this lad on an album. I think it was the time where they were going to release Splendor and Misery a few months after and it didn't land on this album and so I was like okay so this was just meant for the compilation but i'm actually really glad that they decided to put this in here after four years so it's a bit bizarre because you know we're talking about a track that it's not like new it's like four years ago but the interesting thing is that it works with the whole context of this album lyrically wise it flows with the horror aesthetic of this album and so it makes for one of the greatest highlights in this album i absolutely love this track and sickness's contribution in this is absolutely amazing with the cut up noise segments he's a great noise producer then we get into one of the more different tracks over here in lacing this track goes into a much different mood it's still another dark moment but it somewhat feels ethereal with some of the more melodic passages over here it has a bit of a more basic trap instrumental to it and the hook features those amazing extremely imaginative samples and also david having some singing moments in this hook which for me 
I was never that much of a huge fan with some of the singing moments of David in some of the previous albums, so I didn't really necessarily know how to feel about this, but the more I listen to it, this is one of the tracks that has grown on me. It might end up becoming my favorite one in this album. It's such an addictive track. It goes into so many great different elements of like instrumentation and pacing. I don't find that necessarily all of the parts of the mixing work amazingly with like some of the more glitchy distorted moments, but I still cannot help finding that this track is just so gorgeous. And finally, like with the previous album, we end with a field recording piece. In the previous album, it was a piece dedicated to Anna Lockwood called Piano Burning, which would go for 18 minutes. And in this final conclusion, we have the track Secret Piece dedicated to like the piece of Yoko Ono. And it's a soothing field recording piece that in my opinion makes for a nice finisher for this album. So I wouldn't necessarily say that I feel that this is better than There Existed an Addiction to Blood. I actually think that There Existed an Addiction to Blood is slightly better as an album. Like for example, I didn't get a moment like All in Your Head in this album, which was a track where the contributions from the features was just mind-blowing. One of the greatest set of features I've seen in a song and I didn't really see that being the case with Visions of Bodies Being Paired. It was actually an album where I didn't really see how some of the features really contributed in the songs they were into. Other than that, this is another impressive album from Clipping. Like, they never disappoint. I actually find that we get some of the greatest deliveries from David like ever in this album and they definitely managed once again to make one of the most groundbreaking and one of the most boundary pushing hip hop albums to be ever made. I'm going to give Visions of Bodies Being Burned an 8 minus out of 10. What's your opinion on this album? Like it? Dislike it? Why? And what do you want me to review next time? Let me know down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.